Peter Rose, Longwood Currency Trading. Uh, well, I took my third loss uh, this year. It was a pretty good size one, as I suspected that it would be, $4,000. But in relationship to the size of the bank that I'm trading, it's not catastrophic. I mean, I'm not trading a $20,000 account, taking a $4,000 loss. But more on that later, because it's cold out here. It's, um, oh, you know, second week of uh, uh, November of 2022 in New Hampshire. It was 32 this morning when uh, when I got up. It's it's warmed up to 38, but the wind is blowing, and I was going to walk around the yard, and uh, just uh, appreciate the the change of the uh, seasons from fall to what we call up here stick season. Uh, but I'm going inside. A little warm coffee. We'll go in the library and we'll chat a little bit. All right, so we're uh, a few days ago. Uh, this is when I had that loss, and you know the last video that I uh, posted. If you haven't seen it, it's uh, it's a long one, but it's uh, pretty interesting. It's what's keeping you from trading forex, and it has to do with I think <clears throat> most. Uh, new traders uh, that email me and are looking for some advice or whatever, I think their greatest fear in looking at the Forex market is, you might not know much about the Forex market, but you do know it is, that it's very volatile and that uh, small changes in price equate to big dollar amounts. And so uh, there's this fear of loss that's there. And I think that um, the problem is they don't put... Uh, losing into perspective, uh, into the proper perspective for, for, for what it is. It's just part of uh, the statistical game that we're playing. Uh, if you're in poker, you're not going to you're not going to win all the time. You're not going to win. Uh, you're going to you're going to walk away from the table cleaned out. Uh, does that mean that you that you don't play again? Um, you, you 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 have to get familiar with what the forex market is first. Because people who talk to me about uh, their their oh I don't know want to do forex trading because of you know whatever it is whatever fear they have about it indicates that they just haven't studied enough to understand what the forex market is what's the purpose of it it's not a freaking video game it's international economic currents cur uh, currency trading to facilitate economic um, commerce between the two countries. You know, someone's not going to come over here to the United States and buy, you know, two billion dollars worth of air, air, airplane parts with uh, pounds or or Swiss francs. It, 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 it's they have to convert that into U.S. dollars. You pay us dollars, we pay you pounds. Um, you, you make those currency exchanges. It's got nothing to do with you. Loss is part of it. The institutions can get caught and lose, but for the most part, you have to have a willing seller and a willing buyer. And generally, the institutions say, so "Look, I got uh, three billion dollars I need to buy, and I'm willing to sell three billion dollars of pounds to get the dollars." And the guy on the other side of the uh, of the transactions wanting to do the the same thing. The opposite of that, maybe they're making that exchange together. So, um, the people that generally get stuck are the retail traders. Yeah, sure. I mean, the statistics are against us. We're only 15% of the market. We're not the dog wagging any tail here. We're the tail. And if you don't know what you're doing, and you approach the market with a fear of loss, you're going to lose. I mean, what can I tell you? But that's true in any game. If you go in to play a football game, you think, oh, I'm afraid of losing. I don't want to lose. I don't want to drop the ball. What do you think you're going to do? You're going to drop the ball. Um, you develop confidence in your trading by trading, losing a little bit, gaining a little bit, learning from what you, uh, learning when you lose, and um, trying to put into perspective what you did right when you win. You don't learn as much when you win, though, as to when you lose. When you win, you think you're a freaking hero, uh, and uh, when you lose, you think you're a jerk. 
um, neither, neither are true. And so in looking at this $4,000 loss that I took, it's, it's, it's only the third loss that I've taken for this year, which is pretty good. I think the total amount of dollars that I've lost this year is probably around $10,000 in those three losing trades. And $4,400 a few days ago, and then uh, there was $1,500 that I don't remember. Because I don't remember the I don't remember the losses, I don't remember the gains either. It was the big ones I do, but <laughs> but that's only because you know I want to share that with you as uh, what's possible when you know what you're doing and you're trading with a large enough bank account. But I want to be honest with you and say when you're trading with that same large bank account and you're trying to make a lot of money, you're going to lose a lot of money potentially. And it wasn't because of anything foolish. It's just that. I had been trading and I had been making a little bit of money. I saw an opportunity to go in. There wasn't much distance between where I, I needed the price to get to in order for me to make a nice return on that money. Uh, it was um, uh, more than $4,000, not much, but it was a little bit more than the $4,000. I got in, the, it, it went in my favor. I, I put in, um, I added uh, lots to that position. And it immediately swung around and went against me, and I went, this is stupid. I mean, it was a spike, and I went, I'm out, boom, I'm, I'm, I'm gone, <clears throat> $4,300. So I went back in and tried to make that up and wasn't successful. I mean, I think I made a couple of hundred dollars or something. I go, you know, it's uh, getting late in the particular session that I was trading. And I just figured oh, that's it for the day. There isn't going to be the type of price action that I that would warrant me getting back in to make four or five hundred dollars or whatever gain that I could make to chip away at the four thousand. That, that's gone. Just so you put that out of your head. I put that out of my head. <laughs> what you're gonna do? <laughs> and um, you're again. The basis of having the confidence to just brush that aside, I mean, you don't brush it aside like, oh, four thousand dollars—that's nothing. That's a shit house full of money. But the only way that you don't get wrapped around the axle about it is if you have a good win-to-loss ratio and your average win value is sufficient, such that you know that over a certain period of time, in you applying your rules in a consistent manner that you'll be able to make that money back and then continue on. Now, depending on the size of the bank that you have is a function of how quickly you'll be able to make that money back. If you're a, a new trader in the four figure to low five figure values and you lose a lot of money, it's very difficult for you to make that back. You probably won't. That's why when I'm coaching people, I really uh, put down a, a hard and fast set of risk management rules because that's the only thing you have control over. You can't afford to take a big loss. If you're trading, a, if you're trading one full lot at $10 a pip, um, you can't afford to take um, you know, a $500 or $600 hit. You, you, it's going to take you a while to make that back. You know, if your expectation is making ten dollars a day, that's the, or ten pips a day, that's a hundred bucks a day. It's going to take you eight or ten days to make that money back. Because some days you're going to lose a little, some days you're going to, not going to trade, whatever. So, um, are you going to be able to make that back? Instead of five hundred dollars, how about two thousand dollars? Losing that, uh, that'd be a, an enormous hit. But when you're trading and have a position on where you're um, $100 a pip or $150 a pip, then the $4,000 loss comes up pretty quick <laughs> at 100 bucks a pip, right? And so uh, the, it's, it's not like you're throwing money away, you're just in a different uh, pip value c category and um, those, those values are, um, they get bigger. And the losses get bigger, but the wins get even bigger because you're cutting those losses off short.
to let the winners uh, grow. And a good win to loss ratio means you're going to win more times than you're going to lose. So if you minimize your losses and you win just a minimal amount of money, you're ahead. Now you might not be ahead enough to be a millionaire or to drive around in a Lamborghini, but <clears throat> for every guy driving around in a Lamborghini, there's hundreds of dead bodies strewn along the side of the road. It's easy to get lucky when you're trading 200 to one. $10,000 account, you're trading 30 or 40 uh, full lots against that. Uh, you know, that's, uh, uh, you just, it's, it's, you just, you're crazy. It's three, $400 a pip, and you're trading a ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 account. If you get that right six or seven times in a row, which is statistically possible, um, you could turn that into six figures. Well, that doesn't mean you know how to trade. It means you got lucky. <laughs> um, those are not the people you want to listen to, okay? Uh, some people can make vast sums of money in the Forex market. Millions of dollars is what's possible. If you want to take big risks, um, and you get lucky, you can, you can join that crowd. Or if you gradually build your account up and then you know when to, to, to go in a full force, then that's skill and you can make a lot of money. The, the problem is how do you get that skill? And so that's what my channel tries to help address is uh, being reasonable and rational about the trading plan that you develop for yourself and what your expectations are. And I'm being very upfront with you. I mean, <clears throat> I share with you a lot of times of my successes. You know, I've had a $30,000 a month profit uh, three times now. I've had my largest um, uh, daily closed uh, position um, just a, a week or so ago, uh, $15,000. Those are anomalies. That's not what I normally do. I do really well, and uh, I'm up uh, for the year about 80% on my on my risk. But um, those aren't just what I do. I also lose, and I've lost. As I just said, I've had my third third loss. Now I haven't had very many losses. Some of those, the reasons for that are because many times I carry positions in negative territory far longer than I probably should, and they end up doing okay for me and making me a lot of money. But when you've been in the markets for a long period of time, like driving a car, when you first drive a car, you, you're like this, you know, you don't talk, don't have the radio on, I'm trying to figure out how to drive. I want you, once you have the, all that down, you're carrying on a conversation, you're looking at the scenery, you're paying attention to the road, everything is great and safe. Well, it's no different in trading. And so all you need to do is develop confidence in, you, in your ability. And how do you get that confidence? You get that confidence by having a good set of rules. Now, whether you develop those rules on your own, based on the mistakes that you make and how you learn, or you go and find somebody that you think you can trust and knows what they're doing, and you find out what kind of educational processes that, 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 that those folks have. But if you get involved in this thing and you're hacking around and you lose a bunch of money, don't blame the market on that. Don't claim that the market is dangerous. Or if your friend is doing that and, oh yeah, I lost $10,000 just like that. Well, yeah, but what, 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 what's their trading background? What's their education background? How long have they been trading? Are they trying stupid and trading at 200 to 1? Uh, are they doing carry trades and they don't know what they're doing? I mean, you, you know, you have to have some background understanding in the overall structure of the market and what the different pieces mean. What does it mean to trade <clears throat> $10 a pip or $200 a pip? What's the difference there? How do you manage the funds that you have into a bank that determines how many lots that you can trade? Those are all just, that's all plumbing. 
and I don't really teach that stuff because uh, you can learn that kind of thing from all the fools that are willing to charge you a couple of thousand dollars or five hundred dollars, uh, you know, to learn stupid shit like that. That you can go to babypips.com. I, I, I teach traders that are um, actually trading uh, for a low five-figure account that are experiencing issues and problems, and I can look at that and I can say, look, try this, try this, and try that. And, and a lot of times. Uh, they go, oh, okay, I can see that. Whereas a really new trader who hasn't been through that, it's very difficult. And I'll, I'll work with somebody that doesn't have any experience, but man, that's a long process. And most of the, most don't have the um, attention span for that, or really, they don't have the real desire to, to do the work necessary in order to sit down and, and, and learn all these pieces. I try to limit the number of pieces that y you need to learn but you still need to learn some pieces and there's some exercises and drills that you need to go through to put things into a logical framework that you can step back and look for, look at and say, gee, when I start trading here, I'd be lucky to be jump ball 50-50. Well, what happens if I'm 50-50? What, what type of trading do I have to do? What kind of rules do I have to have in order to be just a break-even trader? So we go through that situation so that the person doesn't have any fear of the market, but they recognize their limited ability. And you get in and you mix it up a little bit. You might lose a little bit, you might win a little bit, but we can work together on that so that the losses aren't too great. You may make a lot of losses that would appear to be great, but you're learning because when you learn what not to do, as Jesse Livermore said, you learn what to do. But, but you have to, if you're doing it that way, you have to have somebody there that's been along that path that can say, hey, look out for that rock there. Well, but that doesn't mean you're not gonna stumble and hit the rock, but you're gonna be really cognizant of the fact that there may be rocks in that path and you're gonna be looking for them. You're not gonna stumble, stumble over that same rock again. And if you're trained correctly, you'll be able to recognize other things that aren't rocks that are potentially capable of doing the same thing to your account or to your walk down the path. And so I've been fortunate, not lucky, but I've been fortunate that this $4,000 loss is number one, is only my third loss, my third losing day of the year. I've traded 60 days, I think I've traded about 60 days of the available you know, you take 20 days a month times 10 months, it, you know, it's... The number of days available doesn't mean that you trade every day. And sometimes I've, I've carried trades for three weeks. So, <clears throat> but of closed trade days, there's uh, 60 of them, I think. And so in those 60 closed trade days, I've lost three days, three times. For a total of ten thousand dollars, and that's just the way that it is. Are you going to be able to do that? No, you're not going to be able to do that. You're going to be a 60-40 trader. Hopefully, whatever whoever you're learning from or whatever process it is that you're using to teach yourself is that you're trying to get to that 60-40 level, um, and you may not be successful at that either. Just the fact that you win more than more times than when you lose doesn't mean that you're successful and that you're going to have a, po a positive uh, outcome of that. You could, um, geez, you could win nine times in a row and lose once and still be way underwater. You know, you, you, you win a hundred dollars nine times in a row and then you lose three thousand on, on the last one. Uh, you know, it's uh, just the win-loss ratio by itself is meaningless and uh, <clears throat> Uh, there's not many people that go into the depth that I do and how to manipulate your rules so that you're able to achieve these theoretical levels of win to loss ratio and then you develop an average win value that's, that's acceptable and what your expected minimal uh, uh, win should be and how all those things, how all the math fit, fits together to show you the path. Then you got to figure out well, how do I, what kind of shoes do I wear to, to get down that path? I've got these tools, now how do, I, how do I navigate through all that stuff? And that's where the fun for me 
in working with someone comes in to play is because that's where I can help you the most because of my experience. If you're a new trader and you're just getting into this stuff, we've got to really put the brakes on and not do any trading and do all the background stuff first to build your knowledge base on the stuff that's important for you to know, not just the, all the stuff because that won't do you any good, right? And all you'll do is lose. So it's okay to lose as long as you're losing under a plan. If you're just losing, like you're playing poker and you throw your ante in and then you have two drinks and throw your ante in and, uh, you know, what, what's your expectation for success there? Well, it isn't very great. And so, um, although uh, $4,000 is a lot of money to lose on any size account, $4,000 is $4,000. Some people don't make that in a month. And I was looking to make that and more on a day trade. So everything becomes relative to your experience that enables you to rationally look at these positions and say, you yeah. know, I may take a hit on this one, but if I do, it's under control and it's manageable. If I get a win on it, that's great. It may not be enough to be greater than the loss that I'm taking, but if I have enough of those little wins to overcome that, then in the long run, I'll come out okay. I may only come out 5% up on my account for the year. Well, geez, you know, people bitch about, oh, you only gonna get 5% you know, get on, on, on my money. Well, yeah, I mean, T-bills right now, you're getting 4%. And it wasn't but two months ago or something, you get 1% if that. So let's be rational here about returns in the currency market for someone who's just getting started. What do you want to do, make 80% right away? Uh, you're not going to be able to do that unless you're trading 200 to 1 and you get lucky many times in a row. <laughs> Peter Rose, Longwood Currency Trading. Have a great day and have a great trading day.